This function has one local maximum and one local minimum. Our goal is to find both of these. So to find these, what we're going to do is identify our critical values. Now critical values can either occur whenever the first derivative is either undefined, like dividing by zero, or if that first derivative is actually equal to zero. So in either case, we'd like to find the first derivative. So f prime of x, the first derivative here, one term at a time, we're going to go 5x, that's linear, so we're just going to be left with 5 for its derivative. Plus, the next term, we're going to bring along the constant, the 4, and then use the power rule for the x to the negative first power. So the exponent comes down, negative 1 comes down, becomes a multiple. Then we reduce the exponent by 1. So negative 1 minus 1 more makes negative 2 for our new exponent. Let's clean this up just a little bit. Rewrite it. So we have 5 minus 4x to the negative second. Or another way to write that, instead of having a negative exponent, you can say move it down to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. Now thinking through where our critical values would come from, if we plugged in 0 for x, that would be dividing by 0. So we could be thinking to ourselves, what about x equals 0? You could think about it as a critical value, but it's not actually going to be a point on our original graph. Because if we rewrite that original function, it would be 5x plus 4 over x to the positive first power. Again, getting rid of the negative exponent, moving that x to the denominator, and making it a positive exponent. So we can't actually plug 0 in for our x there either, or else we'd be dividing by 0. So that point is not going to be on our graph. So we're not going to worry about x equals 0 as being a critical value. But what about the first derivative equaling 0? So let's set it equal to 0 and see about solving this down. So I've replaced f prime of x with 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and add that fraction to the other side. Can't solve for x while it's in the denominator, so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared. That'll move it out of the denominator and eliminate it from the left-hand side for the time being. That'll give us 4 equals 5x squared. I'm going to try to make this into a power equation, meaning the entire side will be raised to an exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 5. So we'll get x squared equals 4 over 5. Now it's a power equation. We can get rid of the exponent by applying a square root to both sides. What we want to be careful about is because we're applying a square root to our equation, we want to include a positive and negative on the left-hand side. So here we have x is either a negative square root of 4 over 5, or x is equal to a positive square root of 4 over 5. All right, to determine those are both critical values, right? We've got critical values now at both of these x values, but let's see how do we determine whether they'll result in a maximum or minimum. So in this case, what I'm going to do is rely on the second derivative test. All right, so the second derivative test, what we do is we'll start with the first derivative, and I'm going to use this version of the first derivative. f prime is 5 minus 4x to the negative second. And as the second derivative test may imply, we need to take the second derivative. So f double prime of x means the derivative of the first derivative. So one term at a time, we have a constant term, the 5. Its derivative is going to be 0. Bring along that minus 4, that constant, the, or the uh, coefficient. Then we'll use the power rule for the x to the negative second power. So we'll bring the exponent down in front, and then reduce the exponent by 1. So negative 2 minus 1 more makes negative 3. Let's clean this up just a little bit so we can take a look at it. We're going to drop the 0. We're going to think negative 4 times negative 2 makes positive 8. x to the negative third. Or again, using our exponent rules, we can move that x to the negative third to the denominator and make it positive. Okay, so now we have our second derivative. Let's apply the second derivative test to each one of these values of x. So to do that, what we want to do is we are going to evaluate each one of these values into the second derivative. 
So first I'm going to go with the negative square root of 4 over 5, which will look like 8 over negative square root of 4 over 5 to the third power. What we care about in this case is, is the end result going to be positive or negative? We don't actually care too much about what the actual number is that comes out. But our numerator is going to be positive, right? Positive 8. And our denominator, we had a negative value plugged in, but it's raised to the third power. So three copies of a negative overall results in a negative. So positive divided by a negative means negative overall. All right, because we're evaluating into the second derivative, this is talking about concavity. All right, when it, the overall result is negative, that implies that this is going to be concave down. Concave down kind of looks like this, and that means we're going to get a maximum at that x value. Now let's do the same thing, second derivative, but this time with positive square root of 4 over 5. I think 8 over positive square root of 4 over 5 cubed. It's going to be positive 8. A positive number cubed is also going to be positive. Positive over positive equals positive overall, which means concave up. Graphs that are concave up have this sort of look going to them, like the bottom of a bowl, which means that this is going to be where we get a minimum value. All right, a local minimum or a relative minimum. All right, the last thing to do is we have our, we know that we're going to get a maximum at this x value and a minimum at this x value. We'd like to find what those actual values are, where what our maximum and minimum values are. So to find those, what we're going to do is, let me think, negative square root of 4 over 5, positive square root of 4 over 5, to kind of fill in the blanks here. To get the values that they're actually going to uh, B for y values, we need to evaluate back into the original function with each one of these. So what I'm going to suggest is we're going to take, we're going to figure out f of negative square root of 4 over 5 and f of positive square root of 4 over 5. By going back to the original function up here at the very top and plugging in, I'm going to use this version of our original function. Um, However, the other version will give us the same result. Okay, so that's going to be 5 times negative square root of 4 over 5 in for x plus 4 divided by negative square root of 4 over 5, which works out to be approximately negative 8.9443 when I put it in my calculator. And then the other one is just positive, same idea, 5 times square root of 4 over 5 plus 4 divided by square root of 4 over 5. It's going to be approximately, and this is just the positive version of the same number, 8.9443. So negative 8.443. 8.9443. Positive 8.9443. Um, I rounded to four decimal places because usually that's good for the online homework systems. A little bit of work to get through this problem, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, remember, to get that y value, the actual maximum or minimum value, you have to go back to the original function and plug in with whatever your critical value is. Hope this helps. Good luck.